Gold prices are rising, but this has been eclipsed by the small cap gold miners on the ASX that are running rings around it performance wise. While we have seen the gold price rise, we're going to have a look at the top six gold miners on the ASX and the news behind them that's helping them drive their share prices higher and higher. This is Finder Market Points, where we connect the leading market themes and the top performing companies for better trading. If you can like the video to support the channel, click subscribe for updates, and comment below to let us know which gold miners you're trading. Now we're going to jump over and have a look at the trading screens here to see what's the gold price been doing over the last month or so. First off, we'll start and have a look at the gold price in US dollars, which is what we see quoted most of the time. We can see that it has been rounding out a bottom throughout March, a rise in April, and then a flick up in May, and we have seen stronger movements in the, in the last week or so. When we look at that in the Australian dollars or the Australian dollar context, we can see that that flick up has been a little bit more pronounced throughout the May period, but very much a similar trend throughout the last 12 months or so. To understand that differential, it's best to have a look when trading the gold stocks is to see how that Aussie dollar movement has been flowing. So we can see that it has been trending pretty much sideways since the start of the year. So January through to where we are in May, it's been within that channel and we can see that here, we'll highlight it in between the 76 region and it did touch just 80 momentarily in February. So not a huge driver from the dollar moving it around. And then for context, we want to have an understanding of how copper has been moving because copper and gold are often found together, but it's an industrial proxy. So we do see that growth and inflation coming through. As we mentioned inflation, it is interesting to understand that a lot of traders who have been moved to the cryptos and the high volatility and movements there, as that has been plummeting over the last couple of days and weeks, we have seen a lot of those move back towards gold stocks and start to trade up a storm which is what we're going to move over and have a look at now because that's where we've seen huge gains on the ASX and these small cap companies shooting the lights out. So we want to start off and have a look at WC8, which is Wildcat Resources. So Wildcat Resources gain over the month. The week is down 3%, but over the month, it's up 31.85%. It's a very solid gain here. So there's the chart for Wildcat. We do know this is a gold miner with nickel exposure as well. So they have three strategic land positions. They have the Manila province in the Pilbara, Western Australia. They've got the Lachlan Fold in New South Wales and the Fraser Range in Western Australia. Respectively, that covers gold, gold and nickel. So we do have a foot in the nickel camp and we have covered this company and looked at the other nickel miners in other videos that you can click on. Now, click on it in the description, I should say, or in the Shares in Play playlist. So that's Wildcat with a strong performance but a very low share price and low market capitalization. And as you can see, low value, we're only looking at sort of low thousands of dollars moving, but it is a gold cap, a gold miner that has been moving. One that we've seen before, we have looked at before is Firefinch. So we look at Firefinch from a lithium perspective because they're looking to spin out this lithium and focus more on the gold tenements that they do have. So Firefinch is FFX, FFX I should say, and 36.5% gain over the last month and 16% in the, in the last week. So very strong, solid rise. And you can see that uptick here. What we're looking at here is a solid move. We're going from 20 cents up to 40 cents, 100% rise in the space of two months. We're looking at the criteria for a high and tight flag. Again, you can click on the description below because we have been into tutorials of how to trade these high and tight flags, specifically for Australian mining companies. So Firefinch is ticking the boxes for that. It has broken out. And we do see that it did it with volume. So that's a critical aspect that you want to see in the high and tight flag and the likelihood of it putting on say another 75% of this range. So, so about 15 odd cents from the breakout point is quite high. So there could be a target towards 55 cents. Click on the link in the description to see how this plays out for Firefinch and other, other miners on the ASX. So that's number five. We're going to have a look at number four. Is it AIS, I should say, not ADV. AIS is number four. So Eris Resources, looking at a 40.5% gain, both in the week and the month, you can see here, week and month, similar gains. So let's have a look at that on the chart. So Firefinch was the company that's minor, a lithium exposure being rounded out. Eris Resources is in, the, Eris Resources in, the, in copper and gold. So they're a producer as well as a miner. On the exploration front, they focus on greenfields and brownfields, and that's wholly owned Triton Copper Operations in New South Wales, the Carrico Gold Operations in Queensland. The Greenfields Exploration is in the Torrens Project in South Australia, which they own 70% of. The operations on that side of it 
is the Triton Copper Operations located near the town of Nottingham in central New South Wales. And then the Krakow Gold Operations near the town of Theodore, which is about 500 kilometers outside of Brisbane. You can see that they have shot up significantly here. So that is a rapid rise and what they have seen, that flick up in the movement. Now what we do know is when they go from green fields or brown fields into an operation, this is what Firefinch have actually done. So they've commenced the open pit operations in Marilla, in that gold mine in Mali, and Marilla is 80% owned by Firefinch. We will have a look, we'll bring this on screen here so you can see what it looks like when they start the open pit operations. And this is what they've announced to market. So they have been moving, you see the trucks in there, and this is what the mine, mining operation is looking like in their Marilla Pit 5. And then a larger scale operation so you can see what's been happening there in that space. There's aerial photograph. So we'll get rid of that. We'll come back and have a look at the charts. We'll look at number three. So number three on the tick is TAR, which is Taruga Minerals. So we'll get that chart up here for you as well. Taruga Minerals is that copper gold miner as well as precious metals. So the copper gold and precious metals miners, they're focusing in South Australia and especially for the copper side because South Australia does host about 68% of Australia's economic demonstrated copper resources. So that's a strong focus. We know a lot of copper does come out of South Australia and that's where their focus is. We wanna move up to number two, TLM. Actually, while we're on that chart for TAR, you can see again, another 100% rise in a strong thematic, move from six cents to 12 cents in a day. Didn't maintain it on the close, but they have started to consolidate in a tighter. So that you can see there's a downtrend line and an uptrend line running on this chart here. That consolidation does happen and they do have a strong breakout on volume to the upside. There's a strong likelihood that could continue. Do your own research on that trading. This is just general advice on reading a chart and how to apply it. What we want to have a look at is number two, TLM is the ticker. We want to see that that performance over the last month is 57.98%. You can see that down here on the right hand side and 19.85% gain in the month. You can see this movement here. It's a very strong rise in the breakouts. Volume has increased significantly, but it is still a rather liquid company in the grand scheme of things in comparison to a Newcrest and Northern Star and the likes. Now the copper, nickel and gold miner, they have their new high grade outcrop with float assays received in June 2019. They have very strong movements coming from the, from the market. We're going to have a look at the most recent announcement that they have put out. We'll bring that in on screen for you here. So it's updating the identified Lachlan Gold project and upgrading that prospectivity. So what we're seeing here from them is that the Caprina, Gold, Caprina North Ridge and Platinum Gold prospects located in that Lachlan Copper Gold project in New South Wales. They've got 765 samples, <coughs> excuse me, and all assays are now received and being processed. They've also got the Plantation Gold prospect, soil sampling, and that's identified two discrete gold anomalies. So that's what they've been working through. And that's their announcement seeing some of the report coming through here. You can look at that in more detail. You can go to their website to see that. But what we want to do is have a look at the top performer. So we're looking at RTR. she has got some gold exposure, but also they've been talking about lead and zinc. That's been their main driver for them. And you can see that on the share price here. For comparison, we see RTR is up 127% for the month. Very solid gains and a huge movement here. Interestingly, they've got a speeding ticket in the last month around this time of the uptake. So the speeding ticket comes from the ASX, and they're asking whether the company is maintaining full disclosure. The company invariably says yes that they are, and they point to an announcement or a news article that has been released outside of their control. We have seen that this did time with their announcement to market. So that is coinciding with this massive rise in volume, and then a huge rise that we do see is the price has ramped up from around one cent to around seven cents. Again, that's a high and tight flag, and we do want to see that consolidation, which is happening now, as that as that contests, as we do see the volume drop off, if we do see a breakout to the upside with strong volume, that again is another positive movement for these high and tight flags. So click on that description in the video below, or the link in the video, <laughs> link in the description below for that video to talk about how high and tight flags are traded for Australian gold mining or mining shares in general. Now the news that we see, if we start off with the gold exposure, this is going back to 26th of February, the final results of the maiden drilling program for the Lamley project in Patterson Province, Western Australia. What has been, this is a 50% joint venture, we should say, so what we'll run through and see where they are, where RTR is actually exposed to the company and what upside they have into the gold markets. So scrolling through the announcement, we do know that they do talk about 
have you got 50-50 in this joint venture. Just scrolling through. Here we go. So AIC is currently earning interest in the project exploration joint venture agreement with Rumble Resources, ASX, RTR, which is what we're looking at under the terms of agreement. AIC can earn a 50% interest by spending six million over four years and the details continue. So that's their gold exposure, but clearly when we're looking at the timing of these announcements, 19th of April, 2021, Rumble Resources are talking about their lead, zinc lead discovery that's in Western Australia. And when we look at the timing here, you can definitely see that's what's been pushing up the share price. While they are technically a gold miner and they have exposure to gold mining, it's definitely the lead and zinc that has been pushing it higher. There we go, they're the top six. Now look at them on the yearly performance. So we bring this out and have a look at which company has been performing the best. Gold prices are down 14% for the year. Top gold miners, Rumble Resources that we see here on the chart on the left, 223%. Target Minerals, 205. Eris Resources, 164. Fire Finch, the company we've looked at before, spinning off those lithium assets, 162%. Talisman Mining, 113%. And over the year, we've got Wildcat Resources, WC8, 20%. If you like the video, you can support the channel by clicking the like on the, on the YouTube button there, subscribe for the updates, and then comment below to let us know which gold mining companies you're trading.